Welcome to Late Night Tech. I'm Eric Lanigan. This is the show. Oh, yes. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Round of applause from two people. Thank you. So uh, Late Night Tech is the new show that Tech Talkback has now become because it is, as you can see, late at night. You can see there is an absence of sunlight outside and a presence of sunshades and sun windows and artificial lighting, which means it is 9 p.m. Pacific or will be ideally. Right now it's almost 10 p.m. Pacific. But uh, we are starting a new show here called Late Night Tech. Schedule yet to be determined, but it's probably going to be quite often. I would like it to be at least. Hopefully, we'll get it going at least. Uh, maybe maybe ramp it up slowly. Maybe start about like three days a week or so, but we'll see. Just watch watch my Twitter to know when that's going to be. I see I don't have the Twitter anymore on the lower third, but that's twitter.com slash Eric Lanigan. And for right now, instructions on how to call into this show can be found at bit.ly slash tech talkback. And I just remembered I didn't register yet bit.ly slash late night tech. So no one better grab that before I do or I'm going to be really upset. Uh, but this is the show where you guys get to call in and voice your opinions on anything going on in the world of tech. And uh, to, to clarify some confusion that has even been internal here, yes, you can ask me tech questions and I'll be happy to answer them. We do have Leo's blessing and encouragement to include more uh, how to and, and question and answer. So no one think that that's off limits. I may not be, that's no guarantee that I can actually help you in any way. But you can ask, and, and we'll see what we can do. At the very least, I can, I can throw your question to the chat room and, and uh, leave you at the mercy of the chat room folks. So uh, let's see. There is a ridiculous amount to talk about. Uh, see, that's the nice thing. August is kind of a slow tech month unless you don't do anything in August. And then when you come back on the air, you discover there's a whole world of things to talk about. We, I haven't talked to you guys since Steve Jobs stepped down as the CEO, since HP decided to kill the touchpad and sell off their... PC and, and device division uh, and, and the fate of WebOS, of course, being uncertain. And uh, the Windows Explorer new interface has sparked a ton of controversy. And I'm sure you have some opinions on that. And I would love to hear those opinions. And you can call in at 724-265-ERIK, 724-265-3745. That's the number. I do that via a free service called TalkShoe. If you're new to this show, you'll you'll see that it doesn't always work as planned, but it's the best thing that I've tried so far for doing this kind of a thing. It gives a nice call cue and so forth. I can see we have people waiting already. Not sure what they want to talk about yet, but we'll get right to them. I won't waste your time much longer. There's so much to talk about and get into that I won't even bother picking one thing. I would like to get into the Windows uh, 8 Explorer and the ribbon and all that stuff, so we'll get to that. But I think I want to just take some calls since we have so many on the line. Let's, uh, let's say hi to the wrong mouse, this mouse over here. Sorry, I want to preface also, the folks who are watching right now and got to see me set up know what they're in for. But if you're just watching this pre-recorded, then you know that this is the first episode, the maiden voyage of me in the new studio. So we're in for all kinds of fun because I don't know how anything works. Everything is in a different computer, different layout. Uh, all the muscle memory that was in the hands and the arms and knowing where every button was is just gone. So we've got a lot to... Um, well, I may be calling for help uh, myself here. And I actually have, I've got two people waiting in the wings to assist me. As you can see back there, we've got Jammer B, John, Slanina, and uh, Alex right there waiting to help if I, if I scream and say, and say, oh, now they're waving. If, they, if I scream and say, help me, I don't know how to take a call. No, I think I do. If I keep remembering not to use the TriCaster mouse. Okay, let's start here. Hopefully this is sorted by the order in which you called. I can barely read that. Gonna have to magnify that or something. Uh, hi, what is your name and where are you calling from? I'm Gabriel. I'm calling from Oregon. We've talked before. We talked <laughs> Good before. to see you back on the air. Thank you. Uh, here, say something again. Are you guys hearing them on the monitor? Do you want that? Uh, I'd like to hear it, but... Okay, uh, that's fine. I wasn't sure if that was. Uh, see, that I wish we had a little, a little uh, tally, a little counter in the in the bottom corner of the screen that would say how many things are going wrong in this first episode. So uh, that would be. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Oh, I just heard, it's no big deal. I just heard an echo. I heard him on the monitor, so I wondered if that was appropriate or if I, if I was hearing some weird phasing issue. I have no idea. No, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> so, uh, hi, what's, what's your first name and where are you calling from? Uh, well, I just call me Euchre. I'm Euchre. I'm seen on the chat room every day. Uh, like I say, calling from Oregon. I've actually called in before, so this is cool, like I say, to see you back on, on the air again. Well, thank uh, you. Good to be back. Yeah. No, it's and it's, it's, it's obviously an adventure this time around. Uh, one of the topics you didn't mention that I, I wanted to say something about was the AT&T and T-Mobile merger and all the discussions there. Oh, absolutely. Uh, oh, yeah. 
a lot of discussion on old uh, competition, and one of the dumbest comments I've heard about the competitive thing was somebody made a comment that, well, that means that all the GSM carriers in the U.S. will be the same, just one company, and, and there'll be completely different technologies between them and the other carriers that are out there. You'll be in the chance that they could become like a, a one technology versus another situation. Right. And I, I, the, whoever made that comment, it was somebody that I was like, they obviously don't know technology because it, they don't realize how quickly cell phone technology is moving forward and everything is changing. Because they said, oh, yeah, well, there'll be Verizon and Sprint on CDMA. And in two years, there isn't going to be CDMA on Verizon, very likely, or very little of it. Well, so, Euchre, it sounds like your objection to the merger is more technologically based uh, and not so much well, I, business-wise. I'm not sure I object to it. I just I just think that some of the, the objections and some of the discussion about it is just is so lost and, 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 like, off the mark as to what the real problem is. I wonder what's causing that audio question, issue. I, I'm, uh, your audio is not the greatest, but we'll find out with uh, caller number two whether that's uh, whether that's on your end or or everything happening here. But uh, regarding the T-Mobile uh, AT and T merger, of course, that's another topic that we can get into. Um, I, to answer your question, Euchre, I think that the fact that they're all the same GSM, I don't really think GSM or CDMA matters in this case because it's all going to LTE, right? Eventually. It, it, th- what the argument yeah. really comes down to is what they can charge if they are. See, I think you're basing it on on, a, on it being GSM, and I apologize if I didn't get that totally right because I, you know, things are falling off the desk here. I'm trying to figure this out on the first show in the new studio with a new console desk here. Um, do, is that is that what you said? Just say yes or no at this point. <laughs> well, uh, the idea that uh, that te- that the form of technology and and who they monopolize that. Uh, or, the, or I should say the, the, the format of network is going to be something critical in this merger. And it was like, well, I throw more confusion into the pie because, like you say, they are basically all destined to be an LTE. Right, right. And I think they even said that they were going to make T-Mobile customers eventually buy or at least get free new phones. But I think they were going to switch over certain phones away from the T-Mobile frequencies. Well, yeah, the frequencies are a whole different game, too, but there are even phones right now that on T-Mobile that will work on AT&T. They have the correct frequencies built in, and yeah. that doesn't make it any easier for consumers to understand either. Yeah, Euchre, how are you calling in? Are you calling on the phone or on Skype? Because we're getting some weird audio, and I'm trying I'm to... talk to you live. I'm actually on their software. Oh, that'll do it. <laughs> it's, not, <laughs> it's not very good software. Oh, okay. No, no, try something different, I think. But, but thanks for the call. Thanks for being the, uh, no the the first call while I uh, try to struggle here with the the technical side of things. Okay. Again, guys, first show. I, I did warn you on the tweet that this was half first episode and half technical experiment and run through. Let's take the next call here from Oregon. Hi, what's your first name? And uh, well, we know you're in Oregon. So what's on your mind? If you are there, if we have audio even, I don't know. Oregon, anyone there? Okay, I guess not. Uh, let's try East, East and North Alabama. Nope, you're not on yet. One second. Nope, it's clicking and nothing's happening. And I can't mute Oregon, even though no one's there. Alabama, unmute, unmute, unmute. There it is. East and North. You're both in the North and the East. Not Northeast, but... I'm unmuted now. <laughs> yes, you are. Hi, what's your name? Hey, Eric, this is Polly from near Huntsville, Alabama. Hi, Polly. What's on your mind? Uh, Polly. T is in Tom. Oh, Polly. Hi. It's hard, man. It's cool. Uh, I, I, first off, you're doing all right. Hang in there. Yeah. <laughs> never really saw the, Deep breath. Never really saw the old format, so I don't know what I'm getting into, but I did have a topic I wanted to throw out to you because I have some feelings on it, and I want to see what you think. Go for it. Lion's now been out for a while. And I really have started to label it the Vista of OS X. So have I. What do you think? Oh, yeah, absolutely. What, uh, what, what don't you like about it? Well, I feel like they've integrated these features that just naturally sluggishness right there in the core of the OS. Versions and this reopen, last open documents, windows, and applications really just make my, my OS feel sluggish to me. And that reminds me of Vista a whole lot. But there's also lots of bugs. I had a data loss bug that I found that I can't, I can't duplicate on other computers. But when I was airdropping files from one computer to another, 
uh, I have data loss, and I don't, oh, I really? don't know what the deal is. I don't know how to, uh, to to tell people if they should upgrade or not. But I, I just feel like no one's really talking about, okay, Lion, we've had it for a while now. What's the reflection on it? I really just want to – if it weren't for gestures, I would, I would downgrade back to uh, Snow Leopard in a heartbeat. It's interesting. I haven't used AirDrop. Anyone else in the chat room use AirDrop and, and have any bad experience? You said, yeah, data loss. That's I'm surprised. Cause I, what happened was, if I were to AirDrop a file from my MacBook Pro to my iMac and then try to manipulate that file on the iMac immediately without, immediately without rebooting, rebooting was one thing that would fix it, the file would just vanish into the ether. If I were to rename the file or try to move the file, uh, it would act as if it were doing something, but then the file would not be present on the computer. Completely hmm. just vanished. Hmm. So, well, that I don't know what happened there. Well, that can't be right. <laughs> so, in, in the future, if I were to call back, is this the kind of stuff you want to talk about? Is kind of an opinion type stuff? Oh, absolutely. Like Carol Carr. Oh, she's out of she's out of Yahoo. You know, I canceled my Yahoo account yesterday. Or is it more like a kind of a you know the current news, the how you feel news? What, what do you talk about? Uh, exactly, all that stuff is good. Everything, uh, all of the above, <laughs> opinions, thoughts comments, just random musings. If you've got software or hardware to recommend or to tell people not to not to recommend. The microphone's just completely turning upside down now uh, for shows. Uh, so yeah, you can call. No, it's fine. I got it. It's just, it's just tightening this up. But it's got lovely handling noise and this is... Ah! <laughs> so I, I I assure you that going forward the show will not be this rough. And uh, if you, if you would like to see example, what's that? What's that, John? It won't be any better. It won't be. No. <laughs> well, I won't at least be playing with the equipment. The microphone will continue to fall. The microphone will continue to fall. Okay, at least we have confirmation about that. I like to be like to be sure. Like to know what uh, what's coming up. <laughs> But uh, Tully, yes, all the stuff that you mentioned is exactly what this show is about. It's about basically anything, anything that, anything that can be communicated via a phone call is open, is fair game for discussion, as long as it's tech-related and not obscene. So that's pretty much all the guidelines there are. So thanks for the call, and, and right. absolutely call back, and we'll talk about uh, Carol Bartz and all that stuff. But let's get through some of these uh, early calls right here and just see what they have to say. And, and to see if, if I'm even still on the air right now. I don't know how the system is working. Let's take a call here from New York. Hi, here's this. Yo, Eric. It's Richard from New York. Sorry I'm late. <laughs> Hi, Richard. Richard Yaw? Yeah. Yeah. yeah there, How Richard. You How you doing? <laughs> Richard Yaw from the chat room. Hey, how's it going? Good. So, um, yeah, the, the month you were out, how do I sound, by the way? Is my audio okay? Oh, it sounds great. Good. Uh, I thought the big story was actually the, um, not even HP going out of business. I thought the big story was all those, um, tablets that were flying uh, off the shelves for $99. And, the touch pads. You know, I thought every, yeah, the touch pads. And everybody was talking about, you know, how that's going to affect Amazon. Amazon is, the, the, you know, the company that people think are going to be the first big uh, competition for, for the iPad. So I, I was just thinking, you know, they actually mentioned the cost to HP on uh, building those things. I think it was like 305 bucks or something. And they were obviously losing a ton of money, but a company like Amazon that could, um, you know, take a little bit of a hit because they own an entire ecosystem of books and music and all that. Uh, you know, if they if they could build it for around the same price or even a little bit cheaper, you know, two eighty, and they can sell theirs for for, you know, I don't know what the point is where they really sell, uh, you know, like uh, the way these HP pads did, but. They, you know, if you lose 50 bucks on these things with books, I mean, if you're getting, I don't know if they get 30% like Apple does, but you don't need to sell that much stuff to come, uh, to come back to even. And I think the, the ecosystem is going to, you know, eventually replace the profit of the hardware. What do you think about that? I think you're exactly right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah the, the ecosystem that Apple and Amazon and anyone else who can do it will become more important than the uh, the money they make on the hardware. Yeah, I think that's exactly right, Richard. I think Apple knows that. I think that's why they've been getting into iTunes and book sales and movie sales and rentals and, and everything under the sun as far as media selling goes. They know that they're not just making hardware like HP was doing, uh, coming from a hardware-only background. And even software, they're trying to sell the actual media that goes on the device. 
And if that's the primary business that is making a, a, a healthy little commission off of each sale, uh, I think that Amazon absolutely could give, it might be the only company position to give Apple a run for their money. They've got the Kindle. They've been successful with that. So clearly they know how to design uh, hardware, tablet-sized devices, and sell them at a, a good price. And they know how to sell virtual goods, virtual eBooks, and virtual movies and rentals and everything to load onto those tablets. And so uh, of any company out there who may think that they could take a, a slight... Uh, a slight hit on profits or maybe sell the device even below cost. That's That could be really disruptive if they sell the tablet for the low, below the cost of manufacturing. I think Amazon is the only company that could do that because they have such a robust ecosystem of aftermarket sales, of after hardware sales. Yeah, and I think Apple, you know, I think they realized also that these apps and songs that go for 99 cents, um, you know, the books and the TV. I mean, I just bought two TV show seasons on the Apple TV and you know, it's, it's 20 bucks or something or 30 bucks for a season. So they're, you know, these, these other uh, digital products we make a lot more money on. Anyway, listen, I'm going to let you get to another call, but I want to also give you guys one little um, thing that some people do in your situations, what they do with all the different cameras. Do you have on your, where you see the inputs, what do you see like a number for each camera? Like what camera do I two, see? I don't know. <laughs> On the TriCaster itself or on the or on the router? Yeah, like if, if you're trying to move, you know, one input someplace to, you know, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. Like, don't you see like this is camera, it's by a number, right? Is that how you guys have it? Like camera two, camera three? Because what some uh, people kind of. do is, yeah, what some people do is if you can name those, they actually put like, you know, like you put like Star Wars dolls or something, like the Boba Fett camera and the Luke Skywalker camera, no. <laughs> just so you know, you know what I mean, which camera it is. All right, anyway, congratulations on uh, the new show, and uh, all the best. Thank you, Richard. Thanks for the call. And yeah, no, my, my confusion about the camera doesn't, it isn't exactly what number it is, although they do now have numbers on them. It's more of what number they correspond to on the TriCaster, because there are, how many cameras in here total, John? Uh, over 30. Over 30. Uh, 72 inputs. So 72 total inputs. Okay. Up to 72 inputs and only eight, only eight TriCaster inputs. So all of those have to go into some combination, uh, some permutation of eight inputs. And so that's why, what'd you say? And they, change five times a day. and they change five times a day for every single setup. So eventually I will come to, <laughs> my, my, my fingers themselves will come to, re to remember what camera is on what button. But for the meantime, I don't know whether... Input number two corresponds to camera 25 or 37, if that makes any sense. Uh, Richard, thanks for the call. Let's try Central Indiana. Hi, who's this? Oh, you're not on yet. It's an odd little delay. There we go. In Indiana. Hi, who's this? Anyone? Anyone there? Indiana. Okay, that's fine. It's a technical run through. Uh, let's. Let's try the Oh, and that person's gone. Okay, so the number to call is 724-265-ERIK. <laughs> that amounts to 724-265-3745. And if you're outside the U.S., you can call in via uh, SIP and via Skype out and Google Voice out, which is a free call to the United States, I think still. Uh, <laughs> And that's still at bit.ly slash tech talkback, even though the name, according to the lower third right now, is Late Night Tech. With me, Eric Lanigan, that's why I've got a phone number that ends in my name. So you can call to talk to who else? Me. And let's see if we... <laughs> this, this might need some kind of a... Yeah, what you need to do... Hold on, John's talking to me. What? No, no, it's not even that though. See, it's just me naturally fiddling with it, like to, like as I move, and so then it because it has it doesn't have that uh, uh, shock mount, then it's I, I hear it, and so then I try to move it more, and then it's just it's a feedback loop, but that's fine. Uh, yeah, I just have to keep the hands off the mic and just stay, I just need to stand in one place. That's all I have to do. Uh, let's try this call now. See if it's back. Uh, next call. Hi, what's your name, and where are you calling from? Uh, Espen, I'm calling from Norway. Hi, Espen. Espen. That's good. Oh, we know. You. Yeah, you uh, called before, haven't you? By the way. What'd you say? Yeah, I have. Yeah, well, hi, Espen. How's it going? <laughs> uh, how's my sound? 
Uh, it's a little echoey. That's good. Um, well, okay, well, that's uh, unfortunate. I'm going to try to fix that next time. Uh, good to see you back on there, by the way. Thank you. Good to be back. What, what I want to talk about today, or what, what I wanted to ask for your opinion about, is uh, is uh, is Apple killing uh, Windows PCs or small laptops now since they've gotten the air out and it's so successful? Are you asking about actual sales? Like, are they... What else? Go ahead. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, because, net, well, netbook sales, <laughs> netbook sales have been down for a long time to begin with, but that's, uh, I've heard that more attributed to iPad sales and interest in tablets over over low end little PCs that have keyboards. Yeah, that, the thing is that, uh, as I've heard, is that uh, Intel is coming out with a new uh, Ivy Bridge chipset, and they've actually postponed that because people don't buy tiny Windows laptops. Right, and and so now Intel's trying to get that get back into that market with the Ultrabook model that they're actually going to start funding. What are they funding? Are they funding research? Or they're funding into? I think maybe they're compensating companies for for building some of these new high end PCs designed to be closer in specs and price to the MacBook Air. Right. Is that is that about what you were thinking, Espen? Are you there? I don't think he's there anymore. He fell out, chat. He, what? He fell out. He fell out. Oh, okay. <laughs> Te- technical, technical run through, guys. Let's try this other next caller. Hi, what's your name and where are you calling from? Can you hear me? Anyone there? Okay, we'll give you a second. Remember, you got to listen to the phone. You can't just listen to the stream because the stream is going to be... I don't know how many seconds to leave, like seven seconds or so, seven to 30. I don't know, somewhere in there, but long enough that it's going to screw up the phone call. So be sure to listen on the actual phone when you call in. 724-265-ERIK. Lines are open. We don't even have lines. I don't know why I just said that. Let's try West Virginia. Hi, who's there? Nope, not unmuting. We now have three calls unmuted that shouldn't be with no one there. And it won't. Okay, now let's try West Virginia. Anyone there? JD, hi. I hear you now. Here, JD. Hi. What's your name? JD. Hi, JD. What's on hey. your mind? Well, Eric, uh, I'm a second-time caller, but I'm a first-time caller from your first show. Uh, oh, great! Well, thanks for calling. To, uh, you may remember me. I just wanted to welcome you back. Uh, been a long-time uh, listener, and now you got the night show where we can. Some of us can listen to you while we don't work and welcome you, say, in the morning. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, yes, no longer in the morning, but, but in, in the night. There's no, there's no corresponding show to call and say that, but, uh, that, that's is where I am now. Well, it's in the morning here. It's, it's yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, but my, my point is, uh, I'm, I'm glad if, if this is a permanent time move that, uh, I, th- I think it's a good move because there's, there's people like us that work during the, the day and being an interactive show, uh, most of us are work during the day in all the time zones, and it's hard to have an interactive uh, call-in show with everybody's at work, and that's where I always enjoy you staying after work and, uh, you know, when you did pilot your show, we'd well, hang around in the evenings and you'd answer questions. Well, thanks, JD. That's that's exactly my hope too. Is that we'll get a, an increased number of calls because people are home and can call in. I got a number of people before who say, "Well, I, I want to call in, but I can't because I'm at lunch." Or, you know, that that's another challenge of doing a live. You know, turn turn down your stream because I'm hearing you back or I'm hearing me back through your phone. Uh, but that is a challenge of doing a, a live show uh, coast, to uh, coast, even, coast to coast. Even, even that's me. That's me talking. Yeah, uh, uh, in a uh, in a uh, single uh, country because. 
There. I'll give you a minute to catch up. Uh, it, it is tough to do a live show uh, coast to coast in this country because obviously what is what is late night on the East Coast is uh, uh, definitely not on the West Coast and vice versa. And so, um, uh, did I before the the show Tech Talkback was part morning show and part midday because some people are at work and couldn't call in. So now hopefully the people who are listening will uh, stay up and then call in at night, and so we'll get some more calls and. Um, a greater, because that is what makes this show go nice and smoothly is when there's so many calls that we can just go at a fast clip from call to call to call. And what I usually tell people, I actually didn't in the morning because there were, we got to a point where a lot of people were just at their desk, couldn't call in. Uh, but what you should do is, if I'm even looking at the right camera, I apologize. Again, technical run through. That's why at least I'm so nervous up here, standing here, not sitting, not on the ball, but standing at the center console here in the new studio. Um, you want to call in with uh, one, one point. You can call in. This goes to anybody. Call in as many times as you want in the course of a show, in the course of late night tech, formerly known as Tech Talkback. But keep your points, keep your calls to limit it to one point per call. And then if you want to, you can just call right back into the queue. But at least this way, we'll say point to point, get, get a nice clip of, uh, of calls going. So, uh, J.D., is the, are you still there? My point is, yeah, my point is the appreciation of trip, uh, the network moving you to a time like I said since it is an interactive uh, program to where people can uh, interact and like I said and you said not be at work uh, we've discussed this over email and I'm really proud of you well th- well thanks JD I appreciate it thanks for the call and yeah now now going on going on 1 a.m. right now on the East Coast they very far fewer people are at work JD thanks for the call Let's try, let's see if, we've still got Oregon up there, and two things that just say non-member. So I wonder, is there anyone from Oregon actually on the line? Hello, Oregon. Nope, I don't hear anyone. Let's try Central Indiana. I feel like we already did. Central Indiana, hi, who's this? Hello? Hi, hi, what's your name? Johnny. Did you say Johnny or Donnie? Donnie. Hi, Johnny, what's going on? What do you think of Yahoo firing the CEO? Uh, I don't know. I think she uh, she clearly has not done anything special for Yahoo. They just keep buying little companies and not really knowing what to do with them. Uh, they pro- it's probably is time for some fresh blood in there. What do you think? Are you there? Oh, <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Either people are just dropping off or they're being muted by the software in a way that it shouldn't. Again, thank you, everyone, for sticking around during the technical run-through for Late Night Tech. Uh, let's try Southern California. Hi, who's this? Hey, this is Craig. Hi, Craig. Thanks for calling. What's on your How mind? How you doing? I'm, I'm, on a, I'm on a Droid X on the Verizon network. Is this like a Google Voice number that I'm calling here? It's, it's not, actually. This is a talk show number, so when you call them, it actually does go over the regular phone lines and then goes over some kind of proprietary uh, VoIP uh, system. Hi, because I heard a lady come on. You are unmuted. But it uh, sounds pretty good. I was watching you on the stream, and it seems like a disaster. But uh, how do I sound to you? I mean, how's it going up there? Uh, your audio sounds fine. Yeah, there's certainly a few bugs to work out. Uh, but I, I think it's going <laughs> smoothly. And for the next episode, it'll certainly be better. Yeah, I just want to say I, I really enjoyed your morning show. I think you're a, a great guy. You're really bright. And uh, I hope Leo gives you, you know, some rain, some space to go do your own thing you're doing a great job there and I, I really enjoy your perspective and your input and just enjoying the show well thanks so much Craig I really appreciate that that really means a lot and I and thank you for calling in on uh, on, on this uh, first late night tech edition <laughs> all right Eric. good luck to you man all right thanks I appreciate it take care and, and call and be sure to call in again uh, uh, next time we'll do when I have something uh, more um, interesting to say about technology because I'm a I'm really in it. It's I'm unmuted. Hello. Uh oh. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, Craig. There's a there's a strange delay going on with the calls. But thanks for the call. I, very very kind words. Let's try California. Hi, who's this? Oh, hi, Eric. Yes, hi. What's your name? Oh, uh, this is PC Easy. I'm calling from uh, San Francisco. Uh, uh, first of all, so can I ask you a question? So is this going to be a nightly show or or, or is this going to be once a week? I. Uh, Hopefully it won't be once a week. I think it's going to be at least three times a week. I'd like to see it go five days. Uh, part of that is dependent on me, whether I can do it. 
What'd you say? Uh, you know, I, I, I couldn't watch your show before, uh, but, um, you know, I watched it. We used to do it at night for a while. And, you know, y- you are, you got it. You understand how to, how, you, the one thing I noticed about you when you take calls is you know how to listen to people. And people sometimes What'd don't you understand say? that. <laughs> you not, I'm you kidding. know how to listen to people. No, <laughs> okay. You got it. You got it. <laughs> Say what? <laughs> Thanks a lot, Derek. I'm giving you a compliment. <laughs> no, anyways. No, but seriously. Um, no, you, you got it. If Leo's listening or whatever, you got to get him five times, times a week. Because, uh, you know, I think there's a lot of Twig fans out there. Some of the programming that's on at night, um, you know, is, is really just terrible. And, uh, you know, there's having a solid live program at night, like that one guy who just called in and said, you know, we can't watch Twit during the during the day because we're all at work, but we would love to have something that's live, something where we can communicate and and talk to you back and forth. You know, that's something that we'd really love. And I, I just if Leo's listening, somebody from Twit's listening, please make this happen because you got the talent. You know, you got the talent for it. Well, thanks so much. I really uh, thank you. I really appreciate that. Oh no, no problem. Just just keep it up, keep working, and don't let. Don't let anybody tell you different, man. You got it. All right. All right. Well, thanks so much. Thank you. Okay, no problem. Bye. Thank you. And yeah, now the, the, some folks in the chat room are saying, "What is this? Is this the show where callers just call in and say they like the show?" Well, no. If you're new to the show, this is this is a this is a call in show. It's a it's a uh, tech news commentary as well as tech question and answer and just general feedback show. Uh, but this is the first time back in a new time slot and with a new name. It used to be called Tech Talk Back. It's now called Late Night Tech. And that means that it's happening late at night. It used to be Thursday mornings. If you go to bit.ly slash Tech Talk Back to find out what this show is, you'll still say it says Thursday mornings. The, uh, the final time slot is yet to be determined. Uh, but I would like to see it uh, five nights a week. Absolutely. Let, let's hope I can make it. Let's hope I can even just stand this long because I'm just standing. Uh, if you're watching the video, you'll see I'm, I'm standing. I don't even have a chair and uh, trying to learn a whole new system of everything. <laughs> Literally everything is brand new here. So that is why I am stumbling like crazy. This is my first practice with the new equipment and everything. And I don't know whether this is due to it being on Windows and it used to be on the Mac or, or whether, I don't know what the deal is, but there are all these calls that are just silent calls just sitting in the queue and they won't leave the queue and they keep unmuting themselves and staying on. I don't know if that's a software glitch or what the deal is, but we'll, we'll monitor that. Uh, and I also don't know who I haven't already talked to. That's odd. Let's try Southern California. Hi, have we have we spoken already tonight? Hey, Eric, <laughs> it's Craig again. I was, Hi, Craig. Uh, just listened to you on hold and... Uh, yeah, it said I was unmuted again, so I'm just listening to you on hold here. So. All right, well, th- well, thanks for staying on hold. Anything else to say? <laughs> I'm sorry? Hey, you got anything else on your mind? No, I just listened to you. Doing, good, doing a great right. job there, bro. All right, thank you, Craig. <laughs> Let's try West Washington State. Hi, here's this. Okay. <laughs> what is that, the silence? I, what is happening here? British Columbia. Hi, who's this? Hopefully a human being. No. <laughs> it's, it's, it's like it's not registering my clicks or something. I'm clicking. I can show you my screen, can't I? So you can see exactly what I'm referring to. Uh, but I don't know which preview that is. Or maybe I can't. Yes, there it is. Um, yeah. So this is my call queue. And I'm clicking on folks. And nothing's happening. Click, click, click. Nothing. Now something happened. Do we have a caller from New Mexico on the line? Yeah. Hi. Well, what's your name? Pete. Say it again, please. Hi. I said it. Pete. I'm not hearing that. I'm just hearing a random syllable. Pete. Peter. Peter. Okay. Well, Peter, what's on your mind? I had a quick question. I was wondering, uh, I'm just switched over from Windows to Mac and so the only thing I'm really missing is a good shortcut. And you're talking like uh, for the Windows, especially like when you're in Word programs, you're clicking like your Control Z, Control F, you know, all these control buttons, and they'll right. quickly move. But I can't seem to find any of those on the for the Mac. And especially like if I want to get like a brand new window, like let's say a shortcut to open a brand new browsing window for your 
For your um, Internet Explorer or for Safari? Mm-hmm. Like, do you have a, is there, is there shortcuts and stuff? Because I'm Googling, can't find any Oh, they're shortcuts. all there. They're all there. In fact, the Mac is one of the most keyboard shortcut friendly platforms out there. Uh, basically, any keyboard shortcut you used to use on Windows that was the control key, almost complete parity is the command key. So cut, copy, and paste, it's just take the command, or the, just take the control key you're used to pressing and just substitute that for command. And, and if you still aren't clear about that, then every menu that you look into has, oh, I don't think I have a Mac that I can show, whose screen I can show. Um, but if you go to any open menu, you can see it says like Command N, Command T, all over there on the right-hand column, uh, which is the easiest way to learn a keyboard shortcut. And beyond that, you can even go into System Preferences and assign your own custom keyboard shortcuts to every individual application. So there's, a, okay. it, it, it's a, yeah, so there's actually quite a lot to see in there. Uh, thanks for the call. Let's try this next call in northern, northern northeast Illinois. Hi, who's this? <laughs> Hi, this is Dan. How you doing, everybody? What, what is what is northern northeast? Are you are you way up there in north? Oh, I'm way the heck up there. I'm, up, I'm about a half hour north of Chicago. <laughs> yeah, northern northern northeast. I, I I love how talk shoes says these things. It's not uh, the way that any human would uh, describe where they live. <laughs> northern northeast <laughs> Illinois. So, uh, uh, hi. What was sorry? What was your name? Oh uh, yeah, this is this is Dan. I'm also a uh, uh, Quartinimus in the chat room, like anybody cares. <laughs> well, hi Dan. No, we care, we care, because then we go and we look for I you know. in there. Uh, so, what's on your mind? Uh, no, I'm just listening on hold. Good show. Just want to let you know. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Calling it. Okay. Well, your audio sounds good, and it sounds good here. So, thank you for the for the quality audio check. <laughs> no problem. All right, take care. Uh, All right, bye. Let's try caller in Maine if it will unmute, which it doesn't want to. Hello. Now it is. Hi. Caller from Maine. Hi. What's your name? Hi. Yeah, my name's Eric. Um, I have a question about um, uh, how operating systems keep getting put on smaller and smaller devices, that it seems as though it kind of, as though the public's becoming dumber <laughs> and and not capable of learning, of using some of the more, um, you know, technical programs that take a, a really f- fast processor and maybe a good screen real estate and those kinds of things. And it's whether if it's really these corporations trying to keep the um, maybe secretive some of the more, some of the tools that are used uh, by artists and things, you don't seem to see a lot of those programs that artists use every day for sale at, say, Best Buy or whatever. And it just seems as though... um, if you look at uh, the average computer users, we all used to use the same kind of computer, like a Packard Bell or something like that, years ago. And it seems to, but now they are all branching out into all of these different fragmented companies and small handheld devices. And it just seems as though the the end user is not getting the full experience any longer. And um, and but it's it certainly has caught on, and it seems also that. Um, so are you talking that, about, uh, Eric, are you talking about stripping out features in order to fit them onto lo- lower-powered devices? Well, these small handheld devices are becoming as powerful as computers, but it's certainly not something I would want to um, word process on or, um, or work with, um, say, recording or, or um, uh, recording audio uh, professionally or, um, or even mixing or uh, spending a lot of time on th- th- these kinds of devices. And it just seems as though people are only getting a small portion of the um, experience of computing. They're not going into the artist aspect of it. They're just becoming like chronic users. Of, that's that's of interesting media. that you're. It's interesting that you're phrasing it from from an artist perspective. Are you talking to, when you say programs that artists use? Are you talking about like Photoshop or or, or Lo- yeah, Logic or Premiere? The, you, they just seem like they're taking away. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have uh, been talking. Um, yeah, yes, those exact programs. It seems they just they just seem to be missing in all of these um, handheld devices. Um, no, I think they're there. I, I think there's a lot of artistic applications. There's a lot of sketching applications for the iPad, and, and Adobe has made a number of their own, have, port, have ported a number of their own software to it. I'm not, I'm not entirely yeah, sure what they, you mean. I think they're trying to do that, um, and that's the whole thing. Is it's it's uh, they're trying to bring them into that world. It's just like you know, you, just the idea of a phone 
tr- uh, and and trying to, to use that as a workstation, it it seems as though some people are just they stop at the phone aspect and they just become users of, and and you know it just seems as though they're missing where uh, more. I mean, of of the experience of actually getting to the point of creating their own content. I see. Uh, I I, I think I think what you might be what you might. You, I think maybe you're thinking of how people are now becoming end users and consumers of PC applications, whereas before everything you did on a computer, you basically had to write or bring there yourself. Is do I have you yes, right? Yes, it was harder. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone yeah, it had. It was harder a while back, and to do it, and now, but it seems maybe they're leading. They're slowly leading them into. Uh, um, more complex devices. Maybe it's a good thing because now there are more people using these devices. They seem to be uh, hands-on where, where there were a lot of skeptics that wouldn't touch them. And so they've got them at least into them, and they're very powerful where they have, it seems as though they have whole operating systems on it. It's just, uh, I have a laptop, and I don't even like to use that because it's not as powerful as my quad core. I only have a dual core in the laptop, and just that difference in processing power means everything when you're talking about like 16 stereo tracks of, of, of music being mixed and all the effects and all the things trying to put on a processor. So, uh, so I mean, I, I couldn't even imagine trying to do that on on a tablet at this point. It just seems as though the, the, that the whole uh, quad core processor having to have um, you know just as much speed as possible. It just I haven't even really gone into that handheld device um, realm because I'm just right on the total opposite spectrum where I just absolutely am, you know, uh, into my um, creation programs, the programs that create media, whatever it is, it's just you've always got to be creating something, or else your website's not going to really be that interesting. You're just going to be a bunch of links to everybody else's stuff because you're not using the tools and you're not, um, and it just seems as though that it's uh, with these handheld devices. I just thought I'd bring that up and see whether if there was any um any kind of response to that um whole idea but it sure just, it sure eric what's so, your what's your line of work you, what, what kind of art do you uh create um i i'm a uh, i'm a music artist so i i have rexred.com and so i uh well there's a there are much. a lot there are some great music applications i'm a little surprised to hear you say that because there are some great recording applications for the I, ipad and even the iphone yeah, I think that it for me it's um it's just uh wondering whether if um I could really um interface to that. I mean, I need to hook a a, a MIDI keyboard in. I need um usually I have you Now you know, know there's some, there are some great there are some great MIDI uh devices out there for the iPad. Uh there's Yeah, a, I mean I wish I could. Uh, I, I wish I could search for one right now and pull it up for you. But yeah, if you they just... probably are. They, and I think um, that I'm not saying that they're not there. And, and 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 I know that it also even actually can become a MIDI keyboard in itself. Um, so it's at this point. Um, I'm not dissing that. I'm just saying that I'm I'm wondering if if that is being translated into that realm to the extent where. It's just like installing codecs and stuff like that. How do you, you know, how do you really dicker with some of those um, complex issues with a PC? I know it's just to, to use a codec pack or whatever, but with with uh, with a device like that, it's so proprietary. I couldn't even begin to try to really create art on it. It's more like a um, a displaying of 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 media that's pre-processed and yeah I, I you know, and that's and that's exactly why a lot of geeks become android fans and and, and dislike the apple side because you can't install things like codex you can't exactly, install the, yeah. the, the custom things that a lot of uh media and application creators need but to use someone in the chat room and I, it's been so long i apologize i didn't catch who wrote this but uh someone uh, mentioned the steve jobs analogy that he made at, at that all things d speech a few years ago saying that uh, PCs are trucks, and the mobile devices are cars. And in the olden days, when everyone had 
uh, a truck because that was the only kind of cars there were and everyone needed to haul stuff. But then once people could get little, you know, sporty little cars, that's all they needed. They, that got them where they needed to go and did it in a way that was more fun and agile. Um, so I, I think, you know, you're a music guy. So check out, there are a lot of really good MIDI hardware input devices you can control i saw at macworld you can control like up to seven midi devices at once and, and, and record all that stuff and, and lossless quality so there's actually a lot you can do with an ipad that makes it a very useful device but uh, eric thanks for the call that was an interesting perspective and i wanted to make sure i totally understood where you were coming from um is was that you from british columbia or is this a, a different caller i think this is probably still you is this uh, eric yeah i'm, I'm hoping i'm all hoping right. it's still me um can you hear me eric yeah eric eric hey hey Hi, 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 I hear you. <laughs> uh, any last thoughts? Because then I'll, I'll go on to the next person here. Yeah, yeah, no, I did have a, a thought. I, I was, uh, well, first off, really appreciate you taking my call. Thank you so much. Well, um, thank you for calling. I was wondering about this. I was, you know, just kind of wondering about your show titles. Um, was that the, the title you have um, on the, displayed on the screen? Is that the, like the top one you had, or did you have maybe anything else? <laughs> I guess that's the top one. Why? You, you, it, it's not meeting your expectations? Late Eric, night tech, of course. Always, always meeting your expectations. I mean, I like that. I think that's great. I had a, another little one that just I was just trying to uh, let's hear it. Look at the screen and kind of picture, kind of picture what was the the, the best thing coming to my mind. I was thinking the Tech Night Show with Eric Lanigan. The t- the Tech Night Show. Well, I that makes me think. Is it is it is it a show about Tech Night or is it a what is, what exactly is a night show? I, is, is that really a I don't know. That's good too, but you know, uh, I was just—I I was just—I'm sorry. I was just kind of waiting for the, you know, you know, uh, with uh, instead of with David Letterman, it would be with Eric, <laughs> <laughs> Eric Lanigan. You know, just it, it's, a, it's a giggle. Throw it out there. Maybe put it in the mix. You know, um, uh, maybe see what the chat room thinks. But uh, thanks for taking my call, Eric. And uh, you know, uh, thank you know, uh, answer all these calls from BC. There, we got good um, ideas up here. All right. Well, thanks. Thanks for the call. 724-265-ERIK is the number to call. I'm being handed a note. The tech that... No, I don't want that. <laughs> let's stop that right now. Um, let's see. So to call in, again, this is the, the this is the maiden voyage of a new show called Late Night Tech. If you've been a fan of Twit for a while, you know it was formerly called Tech Talk back and then it's been off the air since the move from the cottage. So it's back. It's going to be weeknights, some number of nights to be determined uh, and to see how many nights I can stand and come up with stuff. And so this is the first episode back. First time with me at the control desk, live at the new studio. So nothing is working, and I don't know how anything works. So that's the nature of tonight's show. And part of the theme with that is that I'm looking right now at a call queue of like 15 calls. I don't know. None of them are going anywhere or have anyone behind them. So I just want to tell everyone, if you if you think that you're on hold right now, waiting to call in at 724-265-ERIC with a K, you're not. Right? Just hang up and call back because something went wrong with the system. Anyone who's currently in there is not actually in there. So just telling everybody because there's a lot. Of, and now they're going away. So everyone actually thought that they were in there. And now that they hear me saying that, they're leaving. So maybe something was wrong with the audio. If anyone in there had called in with uh, Skype or tried to do something fancy that's not a simple telephone, uh, go back and try a phone because maybe that was the cause of the issue. A lot of those calls were just silence. And I, I'm not sure yet what was causing that. Uh, but let's have some more calls going at 724-265-ERIK. Again, normally the show is much more directed and focused and has topics to talk about and get to, but partly because this is just a technical run through and I don't know how anything works here. And partly because I've been off for a, a month. So a lot's happened since then. Um, I'm just waiting to hear what you guys have to say. So go ahead and call in and talk about uh, anything that you would like. Let's try Northern Middle Tennessee. Hi, here's this. I guess that's one of those silent calls I've been hearing so much about. All right, let's try. <laughs> What's going on? Um, are you there now? Tennessee, Hello? anyone? Yeah, hi, what's your name? Uh, yeah, I'm Will. I'm uh, from Nashville, probably northern middle Tennessee or whatever you just said. Hi, Will. Yeah, that's a lot. That's the other problem. Talk to you, it, it, it tries to find the people by their geographic location. So a lot of the times I say, you know, nor- northern upper middle east Georgia, West Coast, and they're like, hmm. "What? I live in Atlanta. What does that even mean?" So, <laughs> so how, how's yeah, not really, you know, I actually I heard it just say like you are unmuted. So um, yeah, yeah. And I was just gonna say like real quick, has anybody brought up the issue of uh, Steve Jobs 
uh, resigning from CEO and, uh, you know, promoting himself or whatever to a chairman on the show yet. I was just going to bring that issue up. Well, I brought it up at the, at the start just as, as a possible topic of discussion. What are your thoughts on that? Uh, I mean, I think it's obviously, um, I mean, the situation could go a lot of ways. With uh, with Apple, I mean, obviously, uh, it means I think definitely that uh, you know Steve Jobs has has got some sort of issues personally or or otherwise that prevent him from being CEO. Um, that's something we definitely know. Um, there's a lot of unknowns. We don't obviously know you know his condition, uh, you know his personal health or whatever, and that's maybe not really necessary for us to know. I was just curious to see what you thought about uh, what it meant for the future of Apple, and you know. Um, how a company, how the company would uh, continue um, with him as a sort of a lesser involved person than he was. Um, obviously, you know he's a visionary, and you know he's, you know, one of the most, um, I guess, you know, spectacular sorts of um, people in our industry, uh, and has been for, I guess, decades now. Um, so yes, I, mean, you know, I was just curious as to what your thoughts were about um, where Apple would go from here. Uh, yeah, I, I certainly, I, I think that Apple. Uh, cannot possibly remain the same w- without Steve. I-, I think his contributions have been immense, and uh, time will tell what ex- time will tell the extent of his contributions. Uh, it-, it-, it remains pure speculation how much involvement he's had with any of the major new products that have come out in the last few years. Uh, just like I've been wondering what exactly his involvement is in the recent missteps. There have been some really strange things Apple has done lately, like the Final Cut Pro 10 debacle and Lion coming out and mm. being like the like the would Steve really have allowed the Vista of OS 10 to come out? I'm not sure. So yeah, I know people are calling it that. Yeah, you know I. I'm personally not a uh, Mac OS user. Uh, I mean, um, so I mean, I wouldn't really be able to say. I mean, I do think. I mean, uh, I know Leo on the you know network a few times has mentioned that he feels that uh, the iPad was a computer Steve Jobs wanted to create from you know I guess day one or you know from from when he formed Apple. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I definitely think that he had to have had a decent amount of involvement in that, and I, I may. I don't have a whole lot of experience with Steve Jobs, but I, mean, I tend to agree with what Leo said on that. I mean, I think that, I mean, the iPad really is kind of, I mean, the next evolutionary step in computing. And, you know, uh, the transformation from the desktop PC to that sort of device, I think, is, is really the future. And I think that it's really natural to see Steve Jobs as, you know, you know, thinking that that would be the ideal, uh, I guess, destination of where uh, computing would uh, evolve. Yeah, I, I think it's interesting. A lot of people in the chat room have been saying uh, what I've heard a lot of people say, which is that, uh, oh, how can you talk as if Steve isn't there anymore? Because he's the chairman of the board. That's a, that's a big deal. Well, I, I think that he wouldn't have done that if, if he didn't have to. Um, it, 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 was, it concerned well, me how unceremoniously he, he resigned. Um, you would expect a person who's had that much influence in a company that, that he himself founded would... Um, would step down with a little bit more fanfare if he if he really did it like as a retirement kind of thing. So I agree with the folks who say this is probably health related and probably means he's not long uh, doesn't have much time left. Unfortunately, as as grim as that sounds, I think that is the case. I also don't think that that's off limits to talk about. I don't think it's probably not right to speculate exactly what's wrong inside of his physical cells, but uh, I I think you have to acknowledge and mention that a person of such influence may actually be close to death. Um, I think Lee, you, you, whatever you can say about what he's done at Apple, clearly being the CEO has, has yielded some very great things and very great products. And and if he really thought it was going to be the same or better being as the chairman of the board, he wouldn't have done it, right? Um, also, sure. also uh, when, when you have so the stories come out about Steve Jobs talking about I, I don't know how many times it was quoted, the famous story about him calling uh, Vic Kudotra or whoever at Google and saying, hey, the, um, the yellow in your, in your logo isn't exactly right. I've assigned a designer to yeah, fix yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, Vic Kudotra, yeah. You yeah. know, yeah. what those stories indicate, some would say it indicates obsessive micromanagement, but at the very least it indicates that he is actually looking at those levels or, or had been. Um, and if you don't have, so he, he did look, and that's something that we know about him as a CEO that, that other people haven't done as CEOs. He didn't just sit at the top and manage the finances, right? Um, no, yeah, he, he was like super involved. I mean, right. Like ultra he was involved very involved. In every sort of aspect there. Right. In every aspect and really putting himself in the position of the user. He was almost the usability expert and, um, um, 
what do you call it, and focus group all in one because he was his own focus group. He just had this amazing intuitive mm-hmm. sense of knowing what people would like and what they wouldn't like without ever even asking them and had very few missteps for a company that, that operated that way. So I, I think his... Yeah, I, no, yeah, and, and, and they had missteps, yeah, but I mean, overall, I mean, particularly in the recent, you know, decade, they've, they've really been kind of a, a champion sort of leader in uh, not only, you know, making products that people want, but making products that... Um, progress the industry, not just define it, but actually, you know, like I said, evolve it. So, yeah, I don't know, uh, you know, interesting points, and I guess just interesting places to, uh, you know, uh, proceed from in the discussion. So, uh, thanks for taking my call, man. Thank you, Will. Thanks for the call. 724-265-ERIK is the number to call to talk to me on this, the first episode of Late Night Tech, formerly known as Tech Talk Back. At a new time slot that is, again, yet to be announced, follow the Twitter Follow the Twitter to find out, twitter.com slash Eric Lanigan, E-R-I-K-L-A-N-I-G-A-N. That's usually the close of the show, but it's not yet. We're going to go as long as we have calls. And uh, as you can see, I'm still very nervous because I don't know what any of these controls do. I used to know how to operate all of this, and now the same controls are in completely different places and buried behind 12 KVMs and 10 router switches. Uh, So we'll eventually figure this out. Let's try username Good News. Hi, Good News. What's your first name and where are you calling from? Yeah, hey, I'm uh, Drew, and I'm from uh, Florida, um, Clearwater, Florida. Hi, Drew. Uh, what's so, what's on your mind? Well, hey, I got a question. I'm, I'm about to buy, or I've been looking to buy an Apple for my first time Apple, and um, I just caught a couple times you commented on this Lion operating system, and, and um, I have, you know, like, uh, you know, um, uh, laptops and things, but I, I've been using regular, you know, Microsoft products, but... Um, and I did have some Vista computers, that, which is a nightmare. So your comparison with this Lion and Vista from some of your callers or comments kind of makes me weary to buy a Mac right now. Is that a concern, or what's, what's going on? No, I wouldn't be concerned. It, whatever reasons you had before Lion came out to buy a Mac are still all there. Uh Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. They haven't really removed anything from Lion. They added some new interfaces that are questionable at best. Uh People have been all over the board. Opinions have ranged about what people think of the new expose replacements um, and sp- spaces replacement launchpad. That's you know making making this bringing in some things about iOS. Do you have an iPhone or an iPad? Um, I have an iPad. I have, I have a, uh, one now for it'll be my second year coming up here. I bought it when they first came out, so I am familiar with the iPad. Um, yeah. Otherwise, so- I use the Android phone. So. Um, yeah, so so yeah, these, yeah, iPads cool. So, so Drew, you're you're an example right there of exactly the kind of customer that Apple was hoping to attract by making those changes in Lion. You're new to the Mac, but not new to the iPad. You're rather your first uh, dip into the Apple waters was via the iPad. So a lot of those interface yep. quirks are not going to bother you because you'll say, "Oh, it's just like my iPad. I love this." Whereas people who are age-old oh, cool. Mac users are like me, and a lot of uh, you know other people are going to look at it and say, "They changed the the way it clicks, and it's I hate it now." <laughs> Does that make sense? Yeah, that's awesome. So let me ask you then, um, since I get you in the call, um, what, I, I mean, uh, you know, you talk about the air. I've, I've heard you a couple times. I mean, I'm not a, a big tech person, but, you know, these airs. But here's the thing. I, I definitely course email and all that stuff, but I do want to do some, um, maybe some editing uh, video, just some light stuff, video editing stuff, and, and then maybe uh, some, some kind of drawing program or something. Um, uh, I mean, is an air the way to go or, or, or you know? I'm not worried about price. No, not so for vi- as, as Well, what are you looking to edit with? What software? Oh, I, well, I don't know the Apple world yet, but I guess everyone uses Final Cut or something. Or, I mean, I'm not sure what's out there to edit like videos and just fun stuff and, you know, home movies and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I think I, 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 I'm a fan of Final Cut 10 in a way. <laughs> for new users, I think it's fantastic, but I would never run it on an Air. Because it can barely run on okay. my Mac Pro. And everyone keeps saying, well, you've only, you only have six gigabytes of RAM. What would you expect? But I'd be like, it's an eight-core Mac Pro. Why would it not run on that? Six gigs is still a lot. They're only, you can't even buy a Mac Air with more than four gigs. And they still are selling them by default with two gigs. So what is Apple thinking making software that can't run on anything higher than or lower than six when their old software, their old Final Cut Pro 7, ran just fine in the, on computers made 10 years ago? So... Uh, oh, wow. So, if what you want to get into is video editing, I would not recommend it an Air at all, especially if you're considering Final Cut Pro or, or Final Cut Pro 10. Um, but even Premiere and, and other alternatives, I even Final Cut Pro 7, I wouldn't try to run on an Air. Anything that's CPU or RAM intensive, I would not recommend 
on an Air. Think of an Air as a very fancy and very expensive netbook. It's, it, I, that's how I think of oh, it. Oh, forget that then. Yeah, forget that. Actually, I take okay. that back. Well, right. hold on. Well, <laughs> um, <laughs> with the introduction of the new uh, processors, the new core, um, or no, the i5, i7, uh, they have made many times increases in speed. But one of the reasons that I did not upgrade when they came out with those is because the RAM did not increase. And one of the biggest problems I have with the Air is the way that the RAM gets used up. I've got my MacBook Air sitting right here. And as we speak, the RAM is completely used up, just on a handful of web pages. And it's, it's choking and the fans are on, and that's horrible considering I don't even have Flash turned on. I've clicked the Flash and I've got Safari running with a bunch of pages. And Chrome is no better, even with other plugins. So um, I, I have performance issues with the Air even though I've got the older generation one, I, I think it's not very good for a power user until they at least upgrade the RAM specs. Um, and beyond that, I mean, you'll have issues with a professional editor editing software just on a screen of that size. You know, the little 11 inch okay. screen is not really adequate for doing video editing. For editing, you want to have big heads up displays and see the video and be able to see if it's sharp yeah, or clear yeah, yeah. and color and all that stuff. Have your awesome. bin of clips, yeah. So I would go with a, I would go with All a right. bigger, faster computer for, for, for professional level video editing. All right, awesome. All right, good stuff. Thanks a lot, Eric. Drew, Good thank help. you for the call. Thank you. Take care. Um, if it's gonna ever, <laughs> I don't I don't understand these this delay and the click on this computer. Uh, let's try this other caller who's not named or given a location. So I'll ask, what is your name and where are you calling from? Anyone. <laughs> I guess not. Uh, let's try uh, South Southeast Missouri. Hi, who's this? Oh, you're not. Hey, I'm now Brian. Uh, what did you say, Brian Hello. in Missouri? Yeah, hi. Yeah. What's I'm on your actually, mind? I'm actually from uh, Fairview Heights, but I have a Missouri number. I didn't know your show was on this late. I was wondering what happened to your show. And I was <laughs> like, whoa, this is Eric. I just turned in by uh, coincidence. This is pretty cool. Oh, yeah, thanks. This is, yeah, first episode back at a new time with a new name. In a new building with a completely new set of controls. So yeah, I, I'm glad you found me. Thanks for calling. Okay, sweet. Okay, since you have a MacBook Air, I've got a 15-inch MacBook Pro, and I've got performance issues as well. Uh, you know, some days I really don't have a lot of things running. I mean, usually what I have running is like Google Chrome, and I will have Twit in the background. But I mean, I've got like a lot of like I see the uh, the pen the uh, the beach ball a lot. Do you suffer the same fate as I do? I do. Yeah, on the air. Well, I well, have the 15-inch MacBook Pro. Hmm. Well, one of the best programs I can ever recommend to anybody is called iStat Menu. I mean, if you have something comparable, that's fine. And of course, uh, that. you you do have that. So, do you keep your so when you have that beach ball? What's your what's your RAM look like? Is it full? Oh, okay. So I guess I don't know how to use that then. <laughs> well, ideally, the iStat menu is supposed to put stats in the menu. So if you don't have that, then maybe yeah. it's not quite installed properly. Do, do, do you have oh, yeah, the okay. uh, do you have your little pie chart or your RAM indicator and the CPU percentage and all that stuff? Maybe I customized it more than I recall it being necessary. Isn't that stuff showing? Yeah. Yeah, I've never like customized it because right now it, I see like Google Chrome at fifty three percent and another Google Chrome at thirty six percent. And my my uh, my machine's really hot right now. The fan has gone off and everything. Yeah. Do you have Flash running on a lot of those Chrome windows? Just uh, Twit Live. That's it. Well, what's your what's your CPU? Uh, I have the i5. That's surprising. That sh and how much RAM? I've got four gigs actually. That shouldn't be. Well, the, the Twit live stream should not be alone causing that. But if you have a lot of other sites open, especially if they have a lot of flash ads, that's that's the worst. Is those is those flash ads? I mean, that's that. You, it really ruins the internet. I mean, you can't have more than a few web pages open. And now I guess they've even gone to JavaScript over Flash because they know people have caught on to that. And so now you've got like what I have and what it sounds like you have, where you've got web pages just open in the background on a Mac that are just completely devouring the performance and the RAM of the computer. So yeah. I, it sounds like the best I can tell you is just don't have as many windows open. That's the advice I've given myself, okay. actually. And keep that iStat open because when you have that open, 
And what I've done is I've customized the colors and stuff. So I have a pretty good sense of what my computer is doing at all times. You don't have to do that. I do that a lot because people ask me stuff like this and I can say, yes, the MacBook Air runs out of RAM very often because I'm watching my actual RAM usage constantly uh, just for browsing the web. So, oh, and, and uh, Fubarski in the chat room, I actually do have ad block on Safari. So even that, I, I, don't, even, I don't even know what JavaScript. I've got ad block on Chrome. Yeah, yeah. So I don't even know what JavaScripts are running out of control. I, maybe Apple's partially to blame here, or maybe it's the people who are writing WebKit for. You know, I guess it might be Apple <laughs> uh, for for in Chrome. But I get that too. I guess just don't have as many web pages open. It, it's re, it's really it's a sad commentary on however these web pages are being coded. That uh, pages of generally just text like news articles are taking up all my RAM and CPU. That's crazy. There's no reason for that. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Well, Brian, anything else? No, keep doing it. All right, thanks for the call. Keep keep calling in. Keep those calls coming. Uh, 724-265-ERIK. Let's try this next caller. If there is a caller, it's it's unlabeled, and I've been having trouble with every unlabeled call tonight, but let's say... I got you, I got you. Oh, Go someone's away. there. Hi, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Uh, this is George. I'm from Kanapolis, North Carolina, right near Charlotte. Hi, George. What's on your I mind? I'll talk to you. Well, I got a couple of quick questions, and then one, uh, just you're doing good. Keep it up. Thank you. Don't do any bad. Don't do <laughs> any bad things. <laughs> oh, I was I, no, I was planning to uh, pour this bottle of water all over all the control services, but I guess I shouldn't do that. Is that what you're saying? Oh, that okay. That would be a bad thing. Oh, okay. I didn't realize. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> What's on your mind? That, well, I have a uh, basically, I guess, a, a PC question. Uh, as far as the differences between the i5 and i7, uh, I do mostly uh, say about as high as I'd go would be Photoshop. Don't do much videos or anything like that or no gaming. Is it worth the difference to go for the i7? Hmm. Look at the specs because all those i7s and you have to look at the the generation they came from, the, the labeling is so confusing on the current generation of Intel CPUs. And they've only exasperated the problem, exacerbated the problem by having it be the same, you know, now it's, it's i7 generation two, you know, and then it's a separate category even from there. The best you can do is really look at one of those charts. Uh, I guess it's on their website where I've seen it. And you look at the performance chart and you I see... Yeah, and you go and you just have to look at, at, at what you need. A lot of it gets even more confusing because uh, someone was building a PC recently. I, I was talking to, and he was saying how uh, within the same class of chips, like the i7s, you've got some that are better for power, low power consumption, but then some have a different feature that's like very esoteric. Few people need. He needed it. It's only on the older chip, so it gets very confusing. Tell me again what you're looking to do with it. Basically, yeah, the highest thing I would be doing would be uh, Photoshop, photo editing, uh, and a few compiling uh, movie-type things, but not excessive and no games. And when you say Photoshop, uh, just basic, like, s single photo, single layer, correct, like, color correction, right? right? You're not, like, compositing right. these right. huge photorealistic landscapes. No, I'm on an old uh, AMD Athlon now, and I can go get a cup of coffee while... Yeah, uh, <laughs> pictures up almost. Yeah, no, i5 will be fine. It'll be fine for what you're looking to, okay. to do, I think. Sound good? Okay, well, that, that was my main technical question, but uh, I really am glad to see you back and hope you'll hang in there and Leo will uh, notice you and, uh, you know, promote you and uh, get you some more. Get you some more uh, advertising during the day too, or or any at all would be would be much appreciated. <laughs> thanks, George. Thanks for the call. <laughs> You're welcome. All right, take by care. The way, uh, oh, yeah. By the way, quickly, uh, I'm calling you on Skype. Your sound is almost synced. You're only about three to six seconds off, and everything looking good. Almost synced with what? The sound is almost synced with the uh, video on the. Uh, uh, quit live. Oh, that's you were talking about it being. Almost. Almost. Yeah, you were talking about that's, it being all so bad. That's really interesting because I'm talking because I would think that what that means is that Skype is imposing additional delay, but I'm talking to you with that delay, 
And this conversation has sounded fine. That's weird. J- Jammer B's laughing. Do you, can you, what, is, what do you make of that, John? What do you, yeah, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, that's interesting. And what are you calling on? Is it Skype? You sound like it's on a telephone. So are you using a headset or using Skype via like a smartphone app? Using a, a good uh, audio headset and a pretty good computer. Oh, okay. Now, I guess you did call Skype out, didn't you? Because you had to dial the regular phone number. Right. Okay. Right. Well, that's interesting. I don't. I don't know why the. Um, what, what stream are you watching? Uh, Ustream. That's interesting. Do we know if Ustream is a lower delay than Bit Gravity or the others? Guys, I'm talking to a uh, Jammer B and Alex. We don't know. Or there's. Yeah. Uh, Ustream is very different. They are doing variable bit rate. That but the delay. Yeah, I don't know if you could hear. I don't know if you could hear John, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I, but I'm always curious about that because uh, the delay uh, continues to be one thing that that can affect this program because people, of course, they watch on the stream, but what they need to do is hold that phone up to your ear and and, and hear exactly when it says you are unmuted because that's when you're on and not the seven to ten seconds or whatever after you see it finally come across the website. Let's try this next call from Texas. Hi, who's this? Like this, like exactly what's happening right now. I'm here, Eric. I'm here. Hi. Right. Now, are you listening on the stream or on the phone? I'm listening on my phone. And you, did you hear it? As, did you say hi immediately or did you wait a minute? I'm just trying to get a handle on this. Uh, I, I, I waited about a, about a second or so. I wanted to give you a chance to tell me hi. Oh, okay. Well, hi. Go ahead. What, what, what's, your, what's, your, what's on your mind? <laughs> I, I'm so glad to see you back. Thank you. Uh, I'm actually... Glad to see you back at night, too, when it's more convenient for me to listen to and, and to talk to you. Thanks. That's my hope, um, too. I, I would tell you that part of the what we like about watching Twit is to see this trouble that you're having, to see these going through the, the, the back of the behind-the-scenes stuff that, that you're having trouble and you're trying to figure out, and, and we feel more engaged trying to help you figure it out, like, oh, I wonder why he's doing this, and he's He's having trouble with this, and and this show is much better. He had a lot of trouble with the phones last time. I, I, we just like seeing that progression. Well, thank you. Yeah, that, that <laughs> that's nice. And you like to see, I guess this is a full circle, gone from knowing how to do it and then not knowing how to do it again, once again. But uh, yeah, this is yeah. The, this is the one network on Earth where people are like, no, 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 try to figure it out. Try, you know, press stuff. Try to get it. We want to see if, if you can make it work. So, <laughs> so thanks. Right, right. We want to see this stuff. We we don't want to see this pre-packaged, pre-canned stuff. We, we want to see this natural, raw, live kind of stuff. So. Oh, well, I should have said everything I've said has been read off of a teleprompter, even the stuttering, so <laughs> sorry to disappoint you. No. You're doing a very good job. <laughs> All right, well, thanks for the call. Anything else? I No, no that's, it. that's it. Thanks. All right, awesome. Thanks for the call. Take care. 724-265-ERIK. Let's take this call from Number fifty-seven. I don't. I don't have no idea what that would mean. What is, uh, caller? Do you have any connection to the number fifty-seven? Yes. Hello. Yeah. Hi. What's your name? Yeah. Hi. I'm, is your phone? Uh, is your Keegan phone number fifty-seven? New Mexico. Uh, I'm sorry. Say, uh, say your no. name again. Uh, Keegan from New Mexico. Keegan. Hi. And. Uh, I'm just curious. Is that talk to that just assigns that number fifty seven to you randomly, or did you put that as your actual user? Yeah, it, it must have. Uh, it must have just just put that on there because okay. not my username or anything. I just called the number from my phone. Okay, that's no, that's fine. I'm just trying to work out the kinks here because I used to pull this up in. Um, no, I mean, it's just it's just a Java app, but it ha- it is a downloadable app. It's not the web interface for TalkShoe, and so it has a Java app. That you download for either Mac or Windows, and the Windows client, while looks while it looks the same, seems to be behaving a little bit differently. So I'm just trying to figure out what's what. So, uh, uh, what's on your mind? Um, well, I called it first just to sort of help out with the kinks, but then I formulated a topic to uh, okay talk about if you'd like. Sure. <laughs> um, it uh, basically just what do you think about Apple and uh, uh, why would they get into the uh, TV business and if you think they will. Oh, I don't think they will. I keep seeing this about Apple getting into the TV business. And what, what I think when I read that is, what do they have to offer for a TV? 
They don't make the hardware. They don't make the hardware for any panel that, they, that they've ever sold in, in recent years, at least not since Steve returned. Uh, so I, I don't really know what they would gain from selling a giant multi-thousand dollar flat panel that just happens to run their software. Seems to me they'd have a much better business model to just sell the Apple TV, just to sell the actual little hardware box, uh, sell the control the control thing that then interfaces with the TV. The t- it could be any TV in the world, but if they just make a device that that integrates and becomes the front end to the TV, like as a, as, as a custom Apple set-top box with Apple software, that's what I think they would make. I, I would be very surprised if they actually start selling a full TV. Is that, what, what do you think? I, I agree. Um, I agree because uh, if, it's, if it's anything Apple, it's going to be um, thousands of dollars, like you said, and Nobody's going to want to buy a thousand dollar TV that, uh, well, not a thousand, but you know, upwards of a thousand dollars for a TV that um, runs iOS apps. They just have that on their phone. So um, I just didn't understand why everybody thought it would be, um, you know, why it'd be coming down the pipe. And and it could show up. And then this call sounds really dumb, but uh, I figured I'd yeah, ask. I, uh, yeah, the call could sound dumb on my end too because a lot, some very respected tech people, uh, journalists. Uh, continue to say that they, they're, they're staking their reputation that Apple's going to have a TV set on the market. So I, I don't know. They, they claim they're hearing that from someone. I mean, it's always possible that they're hearing it leaked from someone who's been, who's, who's been lied to from the, from the higher ups at Apple and said, yeah, we're going to have a TV. And then they're monitoring to see if he leaks that information out to the press. But I, I just don't see why they would do that. If you think about it, why, what would Apple gain from having their software installed on a piece of hardware that's very rarely, rarely replaced? Apple works in six-month to one-year product cycles, right? People, people very often ditch their, uh, ditch their current phone or their current Mac or iPad and buy another one when the new one comes out. You can't as easily do that with a TV that costs thousands of dollars and hangs on your wall and is this giant like 55-inch or 60-inch TV. It, the, uh, the, the mathematics just don't figure out there. It would, it would make much more sense to me to sell, oh, and the barrier to entry because then the person who wants an Apple TV has got to buy the whole TV. If they ever make an Apple branded television set, I guarantee you it will come alongside a set top box or something that you can integrate and install to an existing TV, something that you can that you have to buy again every year when they have the software and hardware update because I don't see people doing that for a large 60 inch TV set. Right. Uh, the only the only thing I can see it making sense is that the Apple TV can you know you can only do so much over an HDMI signal so and people actually have to click on to it whereas if they turn their tv on and it's an apple tv there's apple on their tv every time they open every time they turn it on that's the only reason i can see why they would do that rather than just the 99 dollars set top box i think they could probably do that and have a similar experience if you look at how for a lot of people their dvr or their tivo is their is their window to the television their window to the tv world uh and and that works fine in that case the tv acts like it did for decades, users of VCRs and cable boxes, the TV was either on or off, and everything else was controlled in that set-top box. Uh, I don't see a reason that that couldn't continue successfully in the indefinite future. Well, um, I mean, I know we all understand it, but the uh, the only problem with that is they'd have to get the content, like you'd have to be able to run through a, a satellite provider or something in order for it to be like a TiVo-like device. That way people could get all of their content and not just uh, Hulu and whatever they're putting on. Well, that brings up a different and equally important issue, which is does Apple really want you right. watching over the air TV or cable TV or direct TV or just anything other than iTunes or something that you buy from Apple? Right. That would be another reason that they wouldn't want to do that. Just as they don't want, just as they never wanted to play the Microsoft plug and play game where they had to r- provide and support drivers for every device under the sun, uh, they may also not want to play the game where they have to support every TV and every pay what do they call it, MMOs, multiple, mul- multiple system operators, all the, you know, your cable TV, your, your satellite TV, all these different systems that they would have to integrate with. Look at what Google TV tried to do. They tried to do that, and they're still having a, a heck of a time getting that to market and having that be a desirable yeah, product. Awesome. And, that was, and that's the same principle, right? It's, it's a replacement for the cable box in most instances. Um, was sort of a, a front end to it at the very least. And the user connects that just over HDMI. It just superimposes its interface right on top of your, your TV feed. And uh, they didn't have a DVR in most of those units. But 
you could do that, I would imagine. But does Apple want to do that? How hard does Apple want to work to make you be happy with not buying things from them, not buying uh, entertainment content from them, movies and music and, and TV shows? So I think that's another reason that they might prefer to keep the Apple TV as a box that is designed to bring Apple branded, Apple sold programming into your living room as opposed to just being the TV set that can receive anything. Oh, I, I completely agree. I, I was just saying that in order for a normal person, you know, they'd be like, where's my uh, NFL or or live TV? You know, I mean, I was just playing devil's advocate, I guess. I mean, I agree. I don't see why they'd, they'd get into the actual TV business or, um, you know. Yeah, because I, I think a number of analysts, when they think about this, they just think Apple is such a big, fancy brand in the consumer electronic space uh, that that they just think to themselves, well, if there was a TV set sitting in the store that had the Apple logo on it, everyone in the world would buy that. But I don't think that's what Apple wants to do because what have they added to an Apple-branded TV? The panel's not going to be theirs. The panel's going to be outsourced from LG or Samsung or someone who makes the panels. Right. What What is going to be Apple-y about that TV? What What is deserving about that television set to deserve an Apple branding to say, this is Apple's, this is Apple's take on a TV? I don't think they're going to do that anytime soon. Right. Uh, I mean, the software, but we already went through it. So, I mean, thank you for your, yeah. <laughs> uh, taking my call. And I'll, I'll, let you get to some, I'll let you get to somebody else. But uh, that was awesome. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thanks for the call. 724-265-ERIK is a number to call in and talk to me, Eric Lanigan, on Late Night Tech with Eric Lanigan, this new show whose first episode is occurring right before your eyes. Let's try, um, again, it's unlabeled. The next caller here on Talk Show. Hi, what's your name and where are you calling from? Uh, yeah, this is uh, Murph, uh, calling from Montreal. Hi, Murph. What's on your mind? Yeah, I just wanted to ask, do um, you have any information concerning, like, I heard Leo mention one time that he he would like to try to get some LAN games started from the, uh, the new studio. Do you have any information about that? If they're I don't, but I think the Jammer B does. Uh, uh-huh. Hold on, hold on, hold on. We got a mic right here. Hold on. Hey, there we go. So at the controls, the uh, game show that is currently in beta, or I think it's a release candidate now. Is that? Oh, where's Alex? Yeah, release candidate. yeah, so it's in release candidate. We are going to have land parties after at the controls when it's a full fledged show, and after we build some machines and figure out what we're going to do. That we do plan on doing it, having land parties here in the brick house. We're just so, not quite ready to do that yet. So ballpark time frame would be what? Um, Christmas. Oh, okay. What is this? This is October? This is a, we're, we're almost in October September, now. Right? Not quite. Yeah. It's September 7th. Yeah, well, that's almost October. <laughs> yeah, Christmas is right around the corner. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it is cool. the plan. That is what we plan to do. Yeah. Oh, there. I have to look at the camera. Excellent. So, um, and Leo said something about we're going to build some machines. So that's exciting, too, building some uh, gaming PCs. Looking forward to that. The issue is where are we going to do it? Um, yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> I don't know. Where, where, where is there? There's going to have to be maybe right there. We just have a whole row of computers or something. But I guess we'll, that would we'll block the out. windows, and it, that's where the is. audience sits. So it's going to be something that will happen. room in the basement. <laughs> yeah, the basement's just uh, not very well lit. Well, it's actually well lit. It's just no cameras or anything. John, how would you like to build a? Another set in the basement and put all a whole set of cameras and are you ready to do that again? Oh, we're going to do that. It's uh, oh really? Nobody nobody knows about it. We're going to use all the S video gear and the old TriCaster, and we're going to start a rival network. Is (laughs) once we have the fiber in here, we'll use bandwidth. Nobody will even know. (laughs) And it'll be what the Jammer B. No, no, no. As always, I'll be behind the scenes. (laughs) Actually, I should be behind the scenes now. So let me go stand over here. What'd you say? Yeah, yeah. Well, so I didn't know this. I think this is a late night tech exclusive. We're going to have some kind of a rival network based out of the basement, apparently. <laughs> well, okay, Murph, does that answer your question? Thanks, Murph. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, thanks. Uh, hey, uh, it was nice to meet you, Eric. I, I think I might have seen you on one episode of Twit Live, maybe, but uh, nice to meet you. Nice, nice meeting you. you. Nice, nice talking to you. Thanks for the call. Thanks. Good night. All right, take care. Uh, yeah, that'll be cool to get some LAN parties going. I've got a... I've got to brush up on my PC gaming skills, I guess. Is, are you going to limit it just to uh, PC games or consoles as well? It's going to be all over. All over. So there might be a whole set of Xbox 360s for all we know. Yeah, could be. Interesting. Yeah. Could happen. We'll, we'll be building our own PCs for, for here, but we'll, like, I'm sure we'll bring in our 360s and PS3s and 
Yeah, yeah. So Al- Alex said, uh, he said they'll be building their own PCs. So totally PC gaming, I guess, will be the priority. Yeah, well, that'll be what, what we have on hand. But the one, yeah. Every, every once in a while, we'll, we'll switch to something else and then just bring in what we have. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that's... Let's see. What are we, Murph, thanks for the call. Uh, little update there about future gaming perspectives. Let's try this next call in California. Hi, who's this? Hello, this is JJ calling from San Francisco. Hi, JJ. What's on your mind? Hey, Eric, uh, I'm ignorant on this and seeing if you could share an opinion some light. It looks like there's some breaking news today about taxes with Amazon.com. It looks like uh, there's going to be a, a delay on collecting taxes from Amazon. Do you know anything about that? No, I don't. Uh, I heard that they were going to do something about it, but I guess I didn't hear that they did. What did they do? Did they protest or something to the government? I heard I heard Amazon, right, yeah. Amazon was going to try to get a vote going. Uh, it looks like there's an agreement. They're going to wait till uh, July 30, 31st, 2012 to get Congress to act. And so I guess they're basically it's just on hold, but I'm just wondering, you know, what what are some of the uh, the positives of, of the delay that you you can think of, or or some of the repercussions of the, of having a delay. Hmm. It's been it's been long enough since the story first broke that that uh, I've kind of forgotten my initial opinion on this, but I think yeah. I think I, I yeah I think I remember hearing a reason that made me think that the tax that they imposed on Amazon was was not very good that it didn't make any sense um, but I'll have to go back to my notes and my or my research to figure out why exactly that was what, what's your take on it are yeah. you you're in California were, were you one of the I'm in California I'm a big uh, I'm a big Amazon guy I, you know I'm a Prime member and. This has been out of the news for a while, so I have no opinion, and I'm just wondering how it's going to affect me. I mean, I, I understand, you know, the brick and mortar, you know, they collect their taxes and whatnot, but I am yeah, trying to figure out what, you know, I know it was it got a lot of negative press, and, and, and mainly from Amazon. I think basically they're threatening to not do business in California. Yeah, or I think I heard now they're going to do something like they're going to... Uh, they're trying to bargain, I think, with the California legislature. They're trying to say that they'll build, they promise to build a new shipping center or some new building of some kind, physical headquarters, uh, in which they will employ a lot of local Californians, I think is what's going on. But I'm going to have to go back and uh, catch the latest update on the Amazon tax story. Yeah, you're right. Uh, they're gonna, they were offering to build distribution centers uh, and hire Californians, but uh, I guess the government was thinking that's a sham, so... Yeah, I guess um, I'm kind of out of the loop too, but um, maybe uh, when we both get some more backstory, <laughs> I'll call again. Exactly. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to look and see what what exactly uh, has progressed with that story today. Um, oh, this is weird. Now it's showing it's putting people up at the top of the queue that have not been up there for a while. So I hope I'm getting to everyone in the correct order. Again, these are just Hello? these are bugs that I'm slowly working out on the on the brand new system. But thanks everybody for calling in. I don't we're probably going to wrap it up before too long. Uh, uh, B has been nice enough to stick around uh, in case because I have no idea what I'm doing right now. And with the new console, the new TriCaster, and the new everything in front of me. But uh, let's take this next call here. Hi, what's your name and where are you calling from? Hi, it's Scott from uh, Ontario. Canada. Hi, and what's on your mind? Uh, not much. Just first off, uh, congratulations and welcome back. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yep. It's good um, to be back. So going back a while ago, there was a caller who, I mean, he took in kind of the iPad direction of saying that people aren't as much creative as they used to be. And I was wondering what your actual take was, ignoring the iPad thing, just about people being creative. What is your take about today, uh, these days. So you're saying, have t- has technology harmed just the general creativity of the average person? I'm not talking about technology in general. I mean, do you think people just in general are less creative and are a lot more passive than they used to be? Not taking account for any reasoning, just are they? I don't know. Well, well, I imagine you have some technical reason behind it. Are you? Give me a sense of what you mean here. Are you talking about like since the introduction of the, of the iPad or since for the last 30 or 40 years? 
uh, probably the last 10 years or so, 10, 20 years, it seems to me like people don't realize they have the ability to create like they used to. Hmm. They just don't. I don't know. Uh, I think people have always created little things that maybe they don't anymore. I'm thinking of like, you know, it was very common to make scrapbooks and little cutouts of things with paper that people don't do anymore. But I think they've just translated those skills into doing it on the computer. So I, I, I don't think it's really harmed creativity. Do you? I kind of feel like it has, actually. I kind of feel like people, instead of, you know, drawing or creating or uh, even in the other sense of uh, fixing things like mechanics and other hand skills, they tend to be more consumption and more... Um, well, I'll give you that. I think a lot of people who used to be more mechanical and used to work on cars and things have gravitated more towards computers. But I have a feeling that artists are still, or even just regular folks, are as, just as creative as they always have been. Um, I mean, I don't know, maybe more. Maybe people do, a lot more people are editing videos than, than they ever used to. A lot of people editing home movies, never used to do that before, uh, and getting into photo editing and all kinds of stuff. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't know. And what was your reasoning for thinking that? Just that uh, because the computers deliver the content for you, that people don't need to make it themselves? No, I just kind of was noticing, you know, I was wondering what your thought was, uh, were what, what your thoughts were on it. Um, it just seemed to be that it just doesn't happen as much as anymore from my perspective, because I know that I'm a fairly creative person, I like creating things, and I seem to be standing alone a lot. Um, a lot of hobbies that I have, people kind of disappear from these days. Interesting. Uh, well, know, like like what? Modding, 3D art, but uh, video game modding, 3D art is uh, two of the main ones that I do. But even seeing people, uh, uh, when it comes to not so much my uh, hobbies, but for example, my girlfriend's hobbies of you know creating trinkets and stuff like that. I mean, Etsy makes it more discoverable, but it doesn't seem to be anywhere near as popular as it used to be. Yeah, I I, th I think what you may be getting out of that is that. Uh like crafts, like arts and crafts, like the hands-on stuff. I, I, it, I don't know whether that really has diminished, but if someone told me it did, I would say, yeah, I can see that because I can, th I can imagine a lot of those things have gone to the computer. Uh, but I, I, I don't feel like people are actually less creative than they used to be. I think they may be just expressing creativity in, using digital means. Cool, that was what that makes sense. So, uh, all right, well, you. all right. Thanks you for the call. Take care. Seven two four two six five. E-R-I-K-3745. Let's, uh, I want to make sure that I do diligence to the people who are in the call queue have been waiting patiently. Let's try this caller from West Virginia. Hi, who's this? West Virginia. J.D. Perhaps. J Hi, what's your name? J.D. J.D.? Oh, well, we talked to you a minute ago, didn't we? Yeah, you still mad about me complimenting you? Say that again. I couldn't hear... I couldn't quite hear are you. you. Still, are you still upset about me complimenting you on <laughs> uh, get it, getting the better time? No, no, you can. No, you can't even compliment me all you want. You know, I tried to. We, we've talked, we've uh, tweeted, we've emailed, and uh, I've been looking forward for this for a long time. Well, thank you. Did you, JD? Did you call back in, or are you, have you been on the line? I've just been hanging on. I didn't know if I had to hang up or what. So, okay. Uh, listen. All right. Well, thanks, JD. Your, your compliment is is well appreciated and still stands. So thank you. And thanks for hanging on. <laughs> Let's hey, try. No, uh, no, no, oh, go no ahead. Problem. No problem. Uh, uh, like like I told you personally, I think you deserve uh, a regular show and a regular time, and I hope things. And you get well, thank you, JD. I think that's uh, well. I'll, I'll I'll do you one for hanging on. I'll say that's I'll, we'll say that's the call to end on for tonight. Then I'll say that that's it for late night tech episode one, formerly known as Tech Talk Back. Now late night tech, and it is of course late nights as it is now. It's now eleven twenty six. Probably won't go this late every night, and it will will start a lot sooner because today was the inaugural time of doing it so I have to learn everything from scratch and have been doing that
painfully during the show, not hearing what people say because I'm pushing buttons that I don't know how they work, trying to figure out where the camera is and how to call up, bring up a call. But I think we got through the first episode okay, and maybe by episode two, it will be back to normal, the way that Tech Talk Back has always been smooth as glass, smooth as the surface of an iPad. Here's my camera. I'm even looking at the wrong camera now. See, that's that's what happens here. So uh, thank you guys, and thank you, Alex and Jammer B, for sticking around with me and to be there. I didn't I, I didn't yell for your help, but I certainly uh, uh, disparaged the equipment a, 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 along the way. So there's that. Uh, so thank you everybody for watching. Uh, follow me on Twitter. Always, that's just a general good thing to do. But especially if you want to know when this show is coming on again, and also check the Twit Live calendar. Uh, I'm going to try to ramp up production on this and do it as often as possible. Uh, maybe next week, like three days a week. I don't know. I'm going to have to sit down with a calendar and figure this out uh, and talk to the right people. But uh, and say, hey, is this cool? Can I come in at this time? Is anyone else in here? Am I? Is there a place for me to stand? So, yeah. So uh, Jammer B's laughing. So that's going to do it for late night. Tech. You can follow me on Twitter, like I said, E-R-I-K-L-A-N-I-G-A-N, and I'll see you possibly Friday. I haven't even asked anyone yet. I, I don't know. Jammer B is nodding, so Friday might... You have all the evenings you want. <laughs> okay, I have all the evenings I want, so I guess seven nights a week. I'm just, I'm just going to um, bring a sleeping bag under here, under the table, and just, uh, and just live here. All right, thanks, everybody, uh, for watching, and this will be posted on my website eventually. Probably I'll get the uh, video file tomorrow, but I do want to figure out a system where I can leave here after the show with the video in hand so I can post it so it's there for you by morning. I really, that means a lot to me. I want to get to the point where I can do that. I've got to figure out how. Uh, but thanks for watching and for your calls. Thank you everyone who called in on this first episode. Wishing me luck. Wishing me few technical difficulties. Uh, <laughs> I would thank TalkShoe. I would thank TalkShoe for providing a valuable free service, yet they remain to be the weakest link in the entire chain. So first chance we get to replace them, we will. So I, I don't really see a need to thank them, but it is free. Uh, <laughs> talk shoe, not show. Thanks, everybody. I'll see you next time on Late Night Tech. Yay! 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 All right, now we're going to do it again. This time we hit record first. Yeah, we'll hit record now. We'll, we'll do it for real. That was just a rehearsal, just a warm-up. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, too, for excellent, sticking excellent. around. Well, that's what we do. <laughs> it's what <laughs> Alex does. They never even used my uh, Windows ribbon screenshot, but we'll get to all that. There's so much. You know, I, I didn't really know what topics to cover because there's just so much. So how's Danny feel? It felt great. I mean, was I, like, dancing around too much, or did it look fine? Okay. It's just, you know, the, I don't know what we do, but the grease up that uh, mic stand. I don't know if we want to put a spider on it. What's a spider? The big cage thing. Oh, the shock, shock mount. mount. Is it a noise thing? Or is it I think it's a noise thing. thing. Well, he, you know, the, the arm is noisy. So the arm is very noisy, and the chat room noticed that too. But and he needs to be able to move the arm around because he's moving around so much. And, air, and, and Liam does it with his all the time. Uh, I think. Uh, uh, as long as...